I don't think that selfishness is an innate like quality of artists. I just think that to gain all of this inspiration from within you, you have to um, indulge yourself and like what you want to make and what you want to say, at least slightly. Because, I mean, to be an artist, you are creating for yourself, you know, you're creating for your own well-being, you're creating because you don't know how not to create. Good observers of art, connoisseurs of art, are actually probably more rare than artists. The purpose of art is to share ideas. I mean, I think that some of the most important ideas in general are ones that end oppression and end stigmatism. Um, and I think that those are so often what art is made about, um, partially just because it is something new and it is one of the last ways to be somewhat controversial in any capacity, but also I think because um, making something with no functional purpose, I think that it takes a lot of emotion and um, oftentimes, you know, anger, pain, hatred, you know, things that we feel because we've been wronged, those are the things that inspire us to do something purely for ourselves. Well, I think the, the action of making art is not just confined to being an artist, you know. Um, to be an artist is to be, you know, and that applies to every not even person, organism, you know. I, I think the universe is an artist, you know. Um. There's so much art that I love that um, was made just to look good, and mm -hmm. I think that it's still art. The best art to me doesn't have to impact you well in a good way, but has to impact you powerfully, you know. I think that once you label yourself or not even label yourself, it's define yourself in a way that demands continuity. Mm -hmm. I think that that means that you're always going to be impersonating what you think people's idea of you is. Mm -hmm. I think that the only way to get around it is to make your persona or your theme as authentically you as like you possibly can. Was the elevation of Marcel Duchamp uh, because he, he played chess and, and he uh, had given up painting and he was easy to write rings theory about and he was easy to teach. And, and, he, and he was easy to teach in the sense that you could talk about him rather than the truly important European artists of the 20th century, the most important. Pablo Picasso, you know, and you know, to understand Picasso, you had to learn. How, you had to know how to draw, and and you know, had to know how to how to use dimension, and you know, draw dimensionally, and you had to have a skill set. For Duchamp, no, no skill set. For Picasso, yes. Story that I read a couple years ago of this like plumber who had like spent his life just plumbing you know nobody knew that he had any artistic um, designs or you know ideas and um, when he died they discovered these huge sketchbooks filled with these like incredibly detailed like labyrinths and um, obviously I can't speak to him because I don't know if he would have labeled himself an artist or not but um, the fact that he never talked to anyone about it um, or, you know, even showed his work in any way, that kind of leads me to think that he probably didn't view his art in any seriousness, um, which is really sad. Um, but I think that that's an example of someone who is just driven to create and probably isn't taught to take themselves as seriously as they should be. She received a commission from um, a spirit to start the series that, you know, she's known for. The spirit told her um, exactly what to paint, told her the public isn't going to be ready for it yet. Mm -hmm. um, and so basically she was creating for the future, mm -hmm. you know, and she knew that she was. Wow. Um, 
because the they wouldn't have understood it. Yeah. She would have been cast aside, <laughs> you know? Um, so if psychedelics were involved or not, doesn't really matter. Conceptual art took over. Painting's dead, though it never was. But it's been taught like that for generations who came out of university systems spouting this half-baked gobbledygook. I think that you need to accept that art is not functional to accept contemporary art. Um, I really like contemporary art because I think it's kind of like, it's acknowledging that art is not its physical form. It's like stripping down art to its intent and to like the bare minimum of what it needs to be to exist in the world. Um, you could write a book about it with the title The Art of Blank and yeah. put anything in that blank and describe exactly how it's an art and to say the art of blank is to describe the the practice that goes into it and describe how you bring individual into that practice you know so it's kind of this balance of technique and originality I think to be an artist is to be yourself in a practice of something, in a technique of something. And so that's like, you could be an accountant. <laughs> Experience a great work of art, of course you can. That's what, it's, that's what it's for. You know, and a good work of art that really speaks to people tends to usually speak to a lot of people. And then we can all gather around that work and say, this work speaks to me. And that's what we call a masterpiece. It's not very, everyone says, oh, it's so subjective. No, it's not. Every action is creation. A responsibility to be the good, best artist I can possibly be. To push as hard as I can. And I do that and I change and grow, more so than any artist I know. Actually, it's like your art can be being a lawyer, you know? Yeah. And I think just to be an artist is to have an interest in something um, that you don't need someone to tell you to do to be able to do. Legit everything is a medium. If you're a carpenter, you're an artist, you know. If you think, you're an artist, you know. I think just being an artist is something that is original, so. Um, a lot of what I do, I think, is really based on the idea that, like, you know, you, you need to cut out the middleman, and a lot of this you need to cut out, like, the screen or the gallery or whatever it is that's coming between the person and the art. Like, you can just directly contact people, and I think that the idea that we need technology to do anything is really dangerous. And there was all these other players, and then there was Jeff. And... Those funny clothes, all of a sudden he looked like this demented scarecrow. And you just went, oh my God, this guy is way better than everyone else. And you could see the dedication and the devotion and the years of, of, of work. And that he hadn't been out trying to be a star. He wasn't a matinee idol. He wasn't doing the same song every night. He was working on being better. I think that art can be super effective at creating souls because it's often a reflection of your soul. And um, I think that being confronted with your reflection is often what makes you realize how you want to progress and what you want to be, which is, I think, creating your soul. Suits and Mark had one finger, the rest of his hand was blown off. He had one finger and his thumb was his big toe. <laughs> it had an accident with rocket fuel. And when you went to a Mark Pauline, to one of his, the research laboratories events, 
There was machines attacking each other and helicopters flying around, spurting green globs of guck on people. You had to sign a waiver to go to it, <laughs> you know, because they were dangerous. So, you know, that is pretty, a uh, pretty utopian view. Mm -hmm. I guess evolution, mm. because evolution is the, the main frame yeah. <laughs> of all of the artists that we're able to perceive, you know, um, within this planet, you know, so, and on other planets as well. I mean, evolution is legit how flowers become so beautiful, you know, evolution is how we all kind of take form and the form that we take is art. You know, so I'd, I'd have to say evolution is my favorite artist. <laughs> I don't think that having ideas that could be translated into art makes you an artist. It makes you maybe a philosopher or, you know, just someone that likes to think a lot. But um, I think that to be an artist, you do have to translate what you're thinking into a physical form. But complex the world gets the more powerful the simplicity gets. It's a simple thing. And it's a real bitch to do wrong. So. I think that the most dangerous thing that art can do is contribute to normalcy. I think that often its, it's purpose, its intent, um, is to combat commonly held beliefs. It's to make people see things in a new light. And I think that um, even if it's like a conscious thing or a subconscious thing, I think that we kind of recognize that. We know that art is trying to say something to us. And um, if art begins saying the same thing to us that everything else does, I think that it's kind of over, <laughs> honestly. Because all art emanates from dance. All art is, comes from movement, it's not about function. What the philosopher Heidegger described as far from human habitation. It's not about standing in line at Whole Foods, Amazon now, to, to buy organic beans. You know, it's not about dance, it isn't about any of that. It isn't about any of your daily functions. It's about movement so that it, it's a way of exercising free will and imagination and coming to terms with your body and your existence so that when you do stand in line by those beings, you will stand in that line in a different way than if you've never danced.